Welcome back. Sometimes we're informed about approaching severe weather and sometimes natural disasters strike without warning. Either way, there are steps you can take to be prepared regardless of the event. We're still talking with Matt Maddich and Dr. Holzman. Welcome back again, gentlemen. So Matt, I'm gonna go right to you and let's talk a little bit about stocking up on food and water. Um, you know, how much do you need? How do you safely store it? Things like that. That's a perfect question. So uh, obviously being prepared before a disaster hits is extremely important. And one of the ways that you can do that is by preparing a kit. And so one of the ways that you can do that is obviously stockpiling food and water. And food and water should be at a minimum 30 or 72 hours um, okay. worth, of, worth of food and water. Um, and with water, you're kind of looking at one gallon per person um, per uh, uh, for per 72 hours. Okay. So per, per day, per, per day, day sorry. per day. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. No. Um, yeah. And so you're really looking at that for not only the people within your household, but also pets. Okay. Um, and then also food. You want to make sure that the food that you are um, that you are stockpiling is, you know, canned goods, non-perishable, um, even sometimes the, you know, dried uh, foods that you can just add water to. Something that, you know, isn't gonna necessarily expire relatively quickly. Sure. Um, and that can be put into, you know, a, a kit for later on. Okay. Any other supplies other than food and water for personal care that you might wanna have on hand? Yeah, definitely. A flashlight is always good to have. Um, also, some batteries okay. and extra batteries, and you want to go in and check that but that's mm -hmm. going to be available. As we talked about in an earlier segment, a transistor radio or something that you can get a hold sure. of things. In this day and age where we all live by our cell phones, um, do you have extra um, energy to put into that? You know, do you have a little energy okay. stick? But you got to make sure those things are up to sure. date because it's easy to go in there and say, oh, these batteries are from 1964 sure, or whatever, you know, exactly. so um, those things are, are all important. Uh, let's talk about medications and prescriptions. Mm -hmm. So that's a biggie for people, you know, and, and what are the recommendations regarding how to do that? A lot of times with the medications, you, you always want to have a, a good supply, mm -hmm. especially if they're life. <laughs> um, requiring medications. Yes. Sometimes people say put seven to ten days within mm -hmm. in that stockpile okay. right there so you have it. Um, but there's also medications that maybe need to be refrigerated sure. and then you get into the problem if the re electricity goes out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So have, a, have your prescriptions. Know what your medications are. Write them down. I use my cell phone a lot. I write them down and take a picture of it. Yes. Um, then you have that so that you can if you need those medications, we can get it from a different provider sure. if your provider is not available. I was in, uh, there was issues with Katrina, as we talked about before. Those individuals came out of Katrina and were going to all different states, and then they might have needed their diabetes medicines or something like that. We're not going to get it from their regular doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so having those things available and on hand is really important to know what your medications are. Keeping that current list, that yeah. makes good sense. Yeah. How about any documents, specific documents people should have a, you know, readily accessible and be able to get to quickly? Recommendations? So obviously making sure that you have insurance information mm -hmm. um, and identification. Uh, like Dr. Holzman said, you know, it's as easy as just having a picture of it. Um, other documentations, I kind of uh, said something about pets earlier, also making sure that you have uh, vaccination records, not only for you, but also for your pets, to uh, in case you do have to evacuate. Um, knowing your vaccination records is extremely important. Um, other documentation, Again, I use my phone sometimes to do this, but like I can't see without my glasses. Now, of course, I have extra pairs, but if I couldn't get to it or I needed something like that, I've taken a picture of the script that I have for that so that I could go to any eye doctor and say, you know, I need these if, if something was to happen. So just kind of thinking those things through. They're, they're not bad to have mm -hmm. when it's not even an emergency, but you got one on your trip somewhere and then all of a sudden you realize you forgot something you sure. know back home that we all make those mistakes you have it that's a good point uh how about having a grab and go bag something that is just readily accessible that you know is that a good idea just to have something ready that you can just pick up and go with is that a recommendation 
Definitely. So um, at any point in time, you know, if it is wildfires, mm -hmm. we deal with those a lot. If you need to evacuate quickly, ensuring that you have um, clothing and also those food um, and water supplies ready to go. So those, those disaster kits shouldn't be, you know, we all may have those flashlights in the water like strung mm -hmm. throughout our house, but mm -hmm. making sure that they're, you know, in a ready to go either tote or even uh, a bag that can be easily just grabbed and taken out of your house in case you do have to evacuate quickly is definitely always recommended. And another point to think about, especially in Montana, is your car. You know, we're on long roads, um, <clears throat> something happens. Also with weather, if something happens, sure. to have something in your car, that same tote bag, you could have something, one in your car and one in your um, in your house. Also thinking about in your car for the season, what you might need to be worrying about. Absolutely. You yeah. also um, may also want to consider work. We yeah. spend a lot, if you know, if we're, uh, if we're at work, we spend a lot of time sure. there. And so making sure that we have, you know, those those types of resources within our workspace as well. Very good point. Um, we have about a minute left. Is there a good website, good resource, and we can put it up on the screen that people can go to to, to get a checklist of those items to put in a preparedness kit to have ready? Is that available on any resources you guys have available? Yeah, so obviously going to ready.gov is always a great resource. Um, there are also resources at um, the Montana ready.gov okay. as well. Perfect. Thank you. I want to thank both of you very much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to visit with you. Thank, thank you, you for tuning in this week. Be sure to join us again next week. Until then, stay fit, stay well, and stay healthy for life with Healthy Living for Life. Healthy Living for Life is brought to you by Mountain Pacific Quality Health. We'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions for future programs, visit our website at mpqhf.org or call us at 406-443-4020. You can also catch us on YouTube by visiting our website and clicking on the YouTube icon. Special thanks to Fire Tower Coffee House and Roasters. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions.